and more. And uh, we'll just go ahead and jump in. Cool with everybody? Everyone have a pen and paper somewhere to take some notes? Awesome. All right, let's get started. So uh, today I'll be talking about the art of authentic lead generation and marketing. And uh, for those of you who don't know, just real quick, I'll go through my history. I used to live as a monk. Here's me, little baby monk, uh, living in India. And uh, in the robes, everything, $200 to my name, just traveling the world, living a life of service. Here I am in the banks of the Yamuna River, where I actually got my name, the, where I actually got my name, Yamuna. And uh, very beautiful, uh, very beautiful time of my life. And I feel like the common thread that's stayed with me throughout my life is really helping people um, experience their fullest potential as human beings and experience breakthroughs in the realm of healing. And so after I graduated the monastery, I started Jivana Mayurveda, which was basically a holistic wellness company where I was teaching people body work, teaching people the science of Ayurveda. And um, some people here in this room have been to some of those body work trainings and some of the other things that I've taught in the past. And um, you know, I, I started by just giving body work in New York City and felt like I kind of maxed that out at some point. And, you know, I was making maybe three, four thousand a month. And um, at a certain point, I just knew that there was more that wanted to come through me. There was more that I wanted to give. And there was a lot more that I felt like I wanted to receive as well. Anybody feel like that at this point in their business? Like you feel like there's a lot more that wants to come through you and a lot more that can go into the world through your services. And I mean, what a freaking time where we need so much more healing, where we need guidance, where we need community, where we need accountability and support. And so, yeah, if anything's resonating as we go, you can just drop a yes or, you know, whatever in the chat. Um, and, you know, it came to a certain point where I, I started to develop high ticket trainings. I did hire a coach, but I had this experience of looking for a business coach, but I felt super turned off by all the options out there. I was seeing people, you know, flexing their Rolexes and their Ferraris and their Stripe accounts and their ad spend and all these different things. And I was just like, man, I don't feel like these people are going to get my healing practice. They're not really going to get what I'm about. They don't even understand like Ayurveda or trauma-informed coaching or somatic healing. And it just felt like there was a big disconnect in the options out there for actually growing my business in a way that felt authentic without feeling like I had to become a content creation machine, without feeling like I had to, you know, post three times a day and like do dances on TikTok, without feeling like I had to kind of hire like a business marketing bro that I didn't really feel aligned with on a personal level to amplify my message. And so I don't know if any of you have felt that. Maybe, maybe if you have like a frustration um with like the marketplace or in in receiving the right marketing help i'd love to hear it in the chat because maybe we can address that as we go anybody ever felt like that before you can just put put a yes in the chat or put you know a particular experience you had if if there's uh something more specific yeah lakshmi Singh spent so much money that hasn't worked out i mean my god how many people we've had speak to us at CBM who have just been literally ripped off by marketers online um, or just had, you know, products that were really bad. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later because the thing about marketing is you can just be good at marketing and make a ton of money online. And you could have a horrible product and horrible customer service and horrible, um, you know, delivery, which is the unfortunate truth. Whereas, you know, what, what we like to work with with people at CBM is people who are awesome at what they do. People who are healers, coaches, retreat leaders, um, mentors, you know, educators who have awesome products, who can produce awesome results, and they need help with the amplification of that sort of messaging. Um, whereas there's so many people out there who can just amplify promises and not deliver on those promises and, you know, make tons of money from it. So... Uh. Yeah, some people saying relationship is everything when I'm taking guidance from someone who doesn't have the same integrity. It doesn't go well. Yeah, I want to personally, I don't know if you guys resonate with this, but I want to learn from people who I want to become like. I want to learn from people who I want to emulate, not from people who I just feel like, wow, there's, there's pretty much zero alignment here other than the fact that you're good at marketing and I need marketing help. And so I was feeling like that. And literally from that need, 
after I had scaled this Ayurvedic company and education company to around forty, fifty thousand dollars a month on my own, leading trainings all over the world, um, there were so many people that started to reach out to me. Hey, how are you doing this? Hey, um, you know, can you help me move my business? And I and I very slowly said, sure, I'll take a few one-on-one -on -one people, and I charge very little for it. And they got awesome results. And it literally just kept growing and growing to the point where I birthed Conscious Business Mastery uh, many years ago. And um, it's just grown insanely since then. I couldn't have imagined it. It was, it was like I had a, a foot in each boat. One was in the Ayurveda company still, like teaching people how to heal, um, curating incredible education experiences. And then the other foot was like in helping other healers actually amplify their message and and get the sort of business education that they needed to explode. Um, because I, I just saw, man, how many friends do I freaking know who are incredible at what they do, but they just suck at business. Like just, just to be real, you know, and that's not to talk down to them. Like literally they just are uneducated in high level sales practices, high level marketing practices, funnels, systems, teams, hiring, recruiting, like all these things that actual good business requires. And so, this was how CBM was birthed. It was birthed from a need that I saw in the marketplace for someone who's actually built a holistic business to teach other holistic business owners how to actually build a business and not just getting help from like a marketing bro who's never built your sort of business before, never, never marketed your sort of business before. And so not to go on and on about that, but I just wanted to kind of um, share like as a personal story, like these are this lesson that I'm about to share with you is, is literally just like what I wish I had many, many years ago. And, and um, I just didn't know all this was available. I didn't know that there were people in the holistic space making 10, 20, 30, 50, 100, 200, 400, $500,000 per month. There's an Ayurvedic practitioner in our program making around $200,000 per month. There's multiple people in our, in our program making around $300,000 per month. Right. So that might not be what you desire, but I just, I, I literally ha had no idea that things like that were possible for people like us until I began to break through and, and sort of get myself into these spaces. So with all that being said, we can take another deep breath in, exhale, and talk about advertisement. So obviously to talk about anything, we should define terms. Advertisement simply make, means to make something known. Okay. Everyone say, Ooh, ah, thank you, Yamuna. For, it's very, very enlightening. Wow. But the simple thing that we came here to talk about is if people don't know about your product, how could they possibly buy it? Right. There's so many people that come to us and like, man, you know, Yamuna, my, my business really isn't growing. I'm like, cool. How much, how much cold outreach are you doing? How much warm outreach are you doing? How much are you spending on ads per day? How much are you, how many sales calls did you have this week, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, well, not really any. I'm like, huh. So how can we grow if we're not letting the right people know about our products and service in the right way and getting them into conversations where we can truly impact them? So let's, let's unpack this a bit more and um, keep going. So the more people that know what you do, the more opportunities there are for you to make offers to people. Okay, pretty simple. But the more offers you make to people, the more sales you'll make. And the more sales you make, the more lives will shift and the more cash you have to actually fuel your mission, right? Because especially as beginner entrepreneurs, um, the one thing keeping you back is really just cash flow, right? You need cash flow to, in order to survive as an entrepreneur. Um, and at the same time, I think a lot of people in this specific marketplace that we're in see advertising and sales as dirty words. Anybody kind of have a weird sticky connotation around the word sales or marketing or advertising, raise your hand or just say, I, I, okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a bunch of people here. So when we, when we essentially equate, um, no, oh, I'll get into that in a second. So let's just go ahead and, and move on. There's only two ways to get leads. Okay by spending time to make your services known, and I'll show you how to do that, or by spending money to make your services known, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm actually, for, for those of you who stay till the end, I'm gonna give you some awesome resources in, in order to do this and um, a few things from our full paid training 
um, to get some of your first clients. And or or if you already have clients, a bunch of high ticket clients, get your next few in a very easy way for no money down. So um, stay to the end and make sure to get that resource. So <clears throat> smart or smart successful businesses will master both. Okay. Smart startups focus on the method they have more of. So what do I mean by that? If you have more time than money, then it would be my recommendation to use time-based lead gen methods. Okay. Things that don't cost money, but that you can use your time to let people know about your product and service. But as soon as you have more money than time available, then you use money, right? Which means like paid ads, et cetera, as the lead generation method. Everybody following so far, just stop me because I, I know there's so many different people at different levels of, of education in here as far as ads. So anything you and don't understand. You. Sheena's MacBook Air. All right. We got uh, Sheena's MacBook Air. Welcome to the party, Sheena. Um, I'll make sure to turn that off next time. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, just feel free to comment or stop me at any point if you need more clarification. So either way, the equation for success with lead generation remains the same. You have to do the right strategy, right? Proven lead generation methods, the right amount of times, which is volume, with the right amount of skill. That's it. And you will make a lot of money online, right? I know you're still wondering, how am I going to do it? I'll get into that. But these are the basics. And why am I saying this? Because... Without all three, no lead generation will work. You can have volume, which means like you're doing lots of stuff, but you're doing the wrong methods or you're doing it with low skill and it won't work. Okay? You can use the right method. So you have the right method for lead gen, but you're not doing enough of it, right? You only do 10 outreach instead of 100, right? Or you don't execute it with enough skill. Or you can be skilled, but not do it enough times or do the right method. All of those will produce poor results. So we need to have all three of these. We need to do the right strategy, the right amount of times with the right amount of skill. And this is where we really get empowered because if we learn how to do this, we literally create financial freedom forever. If you can learn how to market, learn how to sell with the right skills, the right amount of time, that's it. You're good. That's the, that's the foundation of any successful business. Okay. So this brings us to our six keys to mastering the art of authentic lead generation. So let's dive in. So the very first thing I wanna talk about is a huge misconception. It's not a very sexy concept, but it's so freaking needed. And it's where we start with practically every single client, which is understanding that there's a vast difference between a good offer, right? Who here feels like they have a good offer, raise your hand or, or put, put a yes in the chat, something like that. Awesome. So pretty much everybody here with their camera on and um, getting a bunch more confirmations. Yeah. And there's a difference between a good offer and a good offer with a Grand Slam marketing proposition that actually stands out in a sea of other options. Okay. One can make little to no money and one can make tens, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars and help exponentially more people. Okay. So that's why we're talking about this. That's why we're talking about this. Let's see if I have any more notes on this point. So only having your offer down is like having an amazing tool, but you're stuck in a country where literally nobody understands your language. Okay, because it's, it doesn't matter how good your stuff is if you don't have a way to articulate it in a way that's emotionally and logically compelling and gets a complete stranger to take action and trust you enough to pay you thousands of dollars to a stranger online. Does that make sense? And that is a skill. That is a skill that we can learn. And so it, it actually becomes really unfortunate if we don't master authentic lead generation and conscious sales because you'll end up helping way less people. So these are tied together. A lot of people think, okay, I'm just going to start a business and I'm going to be great at coaching and that's it. Like my, my practice is just going to fill. But you can be great at coaching, but you need to also master authentic lead generation, conscious sales, or else how are the people going to flow in, right? How are the people going to th flow in? And the only thing that actually moves money is sales, right? That's the only thing. Not posting on Instagram, editing your website, doing anything else. Nothing moves money except for sales. And the only thing that creates sales opportunities is good marketing. Okay, that's why we're talking about this. And we'll talk about mindset because again, I think there's 
there's probably a lot of misconceptions. So number two is having the wrong mindset, right? So write this down. So whenever, when you think of, let me ask you this. When you think of reaching out to complete strangers about your product, what happens inside of your mind, inside of your body? And you can just be honest. If it feels awesome, great. If it feels cringy, sweaty, nerve wracking, great. Just put something in the chat. What's, what's one word around how you feel about just reaching out? If I told you to reach out to 100 complete strangers today and ask them to take a next step with your product and service, what's the one word that comes to you? Okay. I feel like I need to dissociate. All right. We'll just copy and paste some messages and look away. Not great. <laughs> Nerve wracking, loss, don't love it, overwhelming. It feels so, so I could do it, but we'll feel all fake, contraction, small, nervous, exploitative. Depends on who. Can be great or not. Woo! Wow. Nobody that said, uh, love it. <laughs> Nobody that said, I, I love it, Yamuna. Well, we're going to get there, right? Because here, here's the thing. If we don't fall in love with making our product and service known, then the end result that you really get all that nourishment and satisfaction from, way less people get to enjoy that end result of your product and service. You get what I mean? So if you're helping somebody as a trauma recovery coach, for instance, or addiction recovery specialist, or whatever it may be for you, <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something that's a little, maybe a little bit provoking, okay? But I'm going to invite you to, to just take it in for a second. If you are really about what you say you're about, let's say that's healing. Let's say that's coaching. Let's say that's addiction recovery. Let's say that's Ayurveda. Then why is it that you're prioritizing protecting yourself from being labeled as uh, pushy, annoying, um, salesy, etc., more than you care about more people getting hands on your product and service. Why, mm -hmm. pri why prioritize... Hold on. Why prioritize keeping yourself safe from judgment of like, what are they going to think if I reach out, right? So many people have felt this. I've felt this so many times myself. Why prioritize keeping myself safe from that feeling over the incredible impact that I could have on this person's life? Because business is about putting others in the center. And to the extent I'm putting self-preservation of myself as the main focus and the main thing I'm optimizing for, I'll avoid reaching out to people. Because I'm making my business about me and what people will think of me rather than about others and the impact I can have on others. You guys, does this make sense for you? So I know it's confronting. I know it's pretty bold. And it's really, really true. Think about the attitude of service. What does service mean? Service means to make ourselves available. Service means to make ourselves available. Care means to make ourselves available. If we're not making ourselves available because we prioritize protecting our ego, protecting, protecting ourselves over making ourselves available, then how can we say we're about what we say we're about? Trauma, healing, coaching, whatever it is. So it's a confronting thought, but I just, I invite you to just sit with it. And it's, it's not a jab at any of you. It's something I've experienced so many times. I'm like, man, let me take myself out of the center here. What's the worst that could happen? And I'm going to show you guys how to do this in a way where it doesn't feel gross, where it doesn't feel pushy, where it doesn't feel salesy, okay? Um, because what's the likelihood you would do it if you found a way to, to, to make it authentic? It probably would go way up. It probably would go way up. So that's why we're here talking about it. Um, what I want to invite also around this whole mindset part is what if you had the energy of giving in, any, in every interaction? where you're reaching out to people instead of the energy of taking and asking. Okay. What if you knew 
hundred percent of the people who engage with your outreach attempts would be better off in their life and feel cared for, served, and seen. What if you knew there was a certain number of people out there waiting for you to reach out to them so that their life could be changed? Would you do it? Would you do it? Right? I think all of us, I think all of us would. Entrepreneurship takes courage. It takes the courage to be disliked. It takes the courage to be potentially, uh, you know, judged, you know? Um, yeah, conscious sales equals sharing, getting out of the ego into service. Absolutely. So many beautiful comments so far. So let's move on to the next point here. If you're unmuted, please mute. I've made a grave error in not having this setting. Um, number three, pretend nobody knows you or your work. Okay, pretend literally nobody knows you and literally nobody knows what you do. Why? Because, well, just statistically, it's true. 99.999999% uh, of the people on the planet have no idea who you are and have no idea what your work is about. And so we need to hear, anybody want to know a test on how to see how, how well you're doing at avoiding this point or at embodying this point, I should say. Anybody want a little quick test? Raise your hand, say I. Okay, cool. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to give someone these questions. I'll put them in the chat. There are literally three questions. You're going to give them 60 seconds to read these questions. So you're going to show somebody these three questions. What specific problem do I help people with? If you're not reading the chat. Number two, what is my next step that I should take based on, your, based on what I'm about to show you? And who do you think I'm not for? Okay. So give someone, give a random stranger, someone that doesn't know you. Give them these three questions, right? Go to a tea shop, coffee shop, whatever. Give them these three questions, okay? Then give them your website or your Instagram and only allow them to look at it for 60 seconds. Just tell them, hey, I'm going to give you my website or my Instagram and I want you to only look at it for 60 seconds and just be able to come up with an answer for questions one, two, three. Okay. This is... This is the test. This is the test of how clear is my messaging? And the reality is in, in this world that we live in, you don't even have 60 seconds to capture people anymore. You have a few seconds. When someone visits your Instagram profile, it's like a business card. If someone doesn't know exactly who you are, exactly how you can help them, exactly the problem that you solve in the first five, 10 seconds, they're out of there. They're going to see your content. They're going to click through to your profile. If they don't know exactly who you are, how you serve, and how they can take their next step, and if you're for them or not for them, within really 20, 30 seconds, they're going to, get, they're going to go off your profile. So we need to have everything be super obvious, right? That a, that a, a fifth grader could tell us, hey, here's what your business is about, Okay. So that's uh, point number three. I think this is super essential because I, in my experience, I, we have a lot of doctors and different like very high level practitioners in our program and, and you know, a bunch of new people as well. Um, but I think when you've gone down the wormhole of your healing practice for so long, you begin to forget what a beginner's point of view feels like and looks like and how to speak their language and how to really like... Um, relate with the exact chapter of the story that they're at. You might be at chapter 10 of somatic healing work. They might be at chapter one, but if you're only speaking chapter 10 and you're pretending like everyone just can understand that and you're thinking that the higher level I speak, then you know, the, the more value I'm going to give, it's not necessarily true. We need to be able to speak to people where they're at and capture them and give them a very clear next step. So if you look at some of the top um, coaches and kind of course creators out there, go to their Instagrams, go to their websites, like go to, go to Jay Shetty's coaching certification website, go to Matt Gray's Instagram channel, go to my, one of my Instagram channels. You'll see exactly who, who we help, how we help them. And one single next step to take that's in the link in bio below. Right. So it's, it's all helping us, you know, gain a list and point people in the right direction. Right. And you don't want to confuse people with too many options with 17 links. Okay, so, uh, oops, 
Next step, triple S formula. All right, this is one of the main things that uh, you need to dial in with your marketing if you want to make it powerful. So triple S formula, everybody write this down. Specific person, specific problem or desire, and a specific methodology to get them there. This is how we create that specificity. So many people that I see online, look at like most of the coaches out there. They speak in really vague language that literally means nothing to a complete stranger. And that's not a dig again. They just say, I'll help you actualize your potential. What does that mean? Like in what way? How? Right? How are you going to help me actualize my potential? That would be the method. It, potential in what? In my relationship? my potential in money, my potential in health, my potential in what specifically. So the more specificity that we have, the more we can capture people who are, who are for us and who are for the specific work that we stand for. The more vague we go, the more we're missing the mark. The more we try to speak to everybody, the more we speak to nobody. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's just a fact. You try, to, you try to speak to everybody, you end up speaking to nobody. So specific person. Out of all, when I ask people, you know, tell me about who you serve. A lot of people say, well, it could really be anybody, you know. Um, well, you know, it could be this sort of person, that sort of person, this sort of person, that sort of person. The thing is, the question is not who could you serve. It's out of all the people you could serve, what's a demographic that would get the best uh, outcome, that would get the best results, that would take it the most seriously, that would be the most resonant out of all the people you could potentially serve. And most people think that by choosing a specific sort of person, they're narrowing themselves, but by not choosing a person, you become, again, just kind of confused in an ocean of a trillion other offers out there, right? So we'll talk more about this. You don't, you don't need to figure this out right this second. And I'll, I'll show you some caveats to this. Um, the second is specific problem or desire. Right. So instead of actualize your potential, what if it was I help I help couples avoid an ugly divorce? You know, I help or I I, I prevent ugly divorces, or I help holistic course creators add an extra 10k of monthly revenue, right? Or I help um, healers become you know top one percent Ayurvedic practitioners right? It's a specific outcome. It's a specific desire. It's a specific aspiration that people have, okay? And a specific methodology to get them there. So what's your proprietary method? And if you don't have one, if you don't think that you have one, well, you just need to probably look a little bit harder because you do. There's a unique flair of skills, of um, ways that you lead people that's going to get them a high-level outcome, Okay. And when we, when we create that into a stepwise formula that we can talk to people about, um, it really gives someone a logical and emotional roadmap to get where they want to go. Okay, so how are they going to get there? It's through our four-step conscious business mastery framework, right? And so when we talk about our program, we're talking about really the pillars of the process because if someone's not bought in on your methodology, people don't buy for details, they're not like, oh, great, I get 143 one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I'm in. They don't buy for the details. They don't buy for how many videos are in the course. They don't buy for, um, yeah, any, any of the deliverables. They buy for the probability and likelihood that it's going to get them where they want to go. The level of certainty you can instill that this is going to work, that's going to be different than what they tried before. It's going to be better than the alternatives out there. It's going to be more easeful. It's going to be more supported. It's going to be quicker. Any of those, right? You don't have to make things up. You don't have to lie or cheat. Obviously, that's not what we're about. But you need to be able to become articulate at here's how this works. Here's why it works so well. Here's how most people try it, right? So I can give you an example with Conscious Business Mastery. So, you know, what a lot of people try to do is they try to grow a huge organic following. and you know, post every day and they try to get leads through posting every day. It's a very common tactic. Now, the problem with that is that likes and shares and views and followers don't equate to sales. And we've spoken with so many 
um, entrepreneurs who have 200, 300, 500 K followers and who are only making one, one or $2,000 a month with their business. And so the problem is that unless you become a top 1% content creator who can simultaneously like create a content machine, knows how to convert people into sales calls and knows how to convert those sales calls into high ticket paying clients, your content is probably doing nothing for you, right? Other than like a nice kind of like a little nurture for your community on Instagram, but it's not creating sales, okay, for the most part. And so what we do instead is we use the, the highly, you know, targeted specifications on Instagram. We run targeted ads. We use this triple S formula so that you can just pay to have the right people reach out to you instead of you having to reach out to them. And we can fill your calendar from there with people who are high intent, who are directly looking for your particular so solution and nurture them with value-based content so that they come to the call already bought in on your methodology. Does that make sense? Right? So I, I was obviously just being kind of uh, raw there, um, just kind of loose with it. But the, the principle is we need to be able to describe why the alternatives haven't worked as well as they wanted. And obviously we can't make stuff up, but if your method is great, we want to highlight what differentiates it and what separates it from, you know, let's say traditional talk therapy, if you're doing some sort of somatic breakthrough method or from pharmaceuticals or whatever it is. And I'm not digging at those particular things. I'm just giving random examples here. Okay. Does this make sense? So the caveat I was telling you about is that we need to have at least two of these really dialed in. You can see some rare, really rare people who just get away with doing one. Like I'll give you an example of someone just having a specific method. For instance, Wim Hof. Pretty much everyone here is familiar with Wim Hof, right? He's not like single moms who are looking to overcome their anxiety. Try my four-step you know, Wim Hof method. It's just Wim Hof method. And because the method itself is so powerful and so popularized, he can just have the, the name of the method carry him through and make a ton of sales. Now, obviously, when you do things like hike through the Himalayas, um, you know, with no clothes on and, and just use your breath work to keep you warm, that's obviously a big social proof and a big marketing, strategic marketing uh, strong point, right? So we should not try to emulate that specific uh, feat. But um, that's an example of someone who just has a specific method, specific problem. I'll give a, a kind of mundane example, but I only wrap uh, Porsche 911 GTR, GT3 RSs with this special wrap. So I don't need to name a specific sort of person because the specific problem I solve is so specific, it's only going to attract my exact customer. You get what I'm saying? I only wrap this one very rare, very specific high-end car in this very specific sort of car body wrap. Right, just to give you a random example. So that's kind of like uh, caveats to where we can get away with not having all three of these stacked. But for the most part, we need to have that. What's the, what's the person with the highest percentage likelihood of actually breaking through with your method, that specific person? What's the specific problem that they're facing in their language that they want to pay a stranger thousands of dollars to solve? Okay. And what's the specific methodology? How can we give a name to our process and be able to explain our process in a way that's logically, emotionally compelling and explains why what they tried in the past didn't work as well as this. So I know that's all a mouthful, um, but all these are learnable skills that can, that can really leverage your product and, and have you blast off. All right, take a deep breath. Almost there. Step number five, become a scientist, psychologist, and an artist all at once. Yamuna, what? I'm just trying to be a coach. I'm just trying to be a healer. I know. Well, uh, <laughs> being an entrepreneur requires you to kind of be all these, all these things at once, all of a sudden. Um, so what do I mean? Well, when it comes to a sci being a scientist, most people spend far too little time, money, and effort looking at data and iterating and seeing what's working and iterating. And the thing is, ads always work. Right, Because as long as more people know that you exist than before, the ad is working because ad means to make known. Right, It, it might not have converted into a sale, but the ad is working in the sense that is making your product and service known. Now, the question is, 
how can we get it to work better and better? Well, we need to use data, right? And so we actually need to become nerds and we actually need to be able to see what has the highest click through, what has the highest conversion, what's actually resonating with people from an imagery or video standpoint. So I'm gonna show you a really great resource um, that, that is a kind of a hack here. And I'm gonna put it in the chat for you all. So let me, let me pull it up myself, actually. I dropped the link in the chat. So this is actually available for everybody. And you can just select United States, you can select all ads, cool. and you can type in pretty much any keyword or page, and it will show you all the ads related with that keyword or that page. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do this really well. Um, um, let's just say somatic coaching just as an example. Now, there's a few things you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you filter just for active ads, okay? You don't want inactive ads. And you become like a scientist, right? You, you study ads, okay? Now, what you're gonna begin to notice is it's, it's organizing them by the date that they were launched. And actually, this wasn't the best example because there's only 13 ads. Any somatic coaches out there ready to take the market by storm? There's only 13 ads for somatic coaching on Meta right now. Yeah, wild. So the maybe I'll give a better example. Let's just say, mm -hmm. let's, let's give a broader example. Business growth. Now we have 18,000 results, right? So that could be a good way to use data too. Pick something that doesn't have 18,000 results in it um, as, as your way of advertising. So it's going to order them by date that they were launched. Now the newest ones, they're not really proven yet. So we want to go down to the oldest ones. We want to go down to the oldest ones. Okay, because these are the ones people aren't going to leave ads running for months or years if they're not profitable. Okay, so this is like a little hack. So we're going down, it's because there's 18,000, it'll take me a while, but let me just take 10 more seconds and we'll stop wherever I land. It's still in October. That's how many people are, are running these sort of ads. Hundreds of new ads for business growth just launched in October. So anyways, um, this, this isn't practically working because it's just taking a while to load. Um, but what I want you to do for your particular keywords or offer is scroll down to some of the oldest ads and begin looking at the hooks. Begin looking at the first few seconds of the video. Begin looking at the sort of imagery that they use. Begin looking at the first line of copy. Begin looking at what sort of promise, what sort of person, what sort of method are they specifying? Try to look for those elements we've been talking about throughout this whole presentation. Become a scientist, right? And Obviously, these are all launched like literally one day ago. I'm just scrolling and scrolling. And for whatever reason, it's just so many ads in this that we're not getting to old ads. Um, let's, let's, let's do one that's breath work because I actually want to bring this home as an example. Okay. Breath work. How many examples we got? We have 1,400. So about 15 times less. Okay. So we go down, down. You can't really count any of these newer ads as things to emulate. You can still study them, but just they've only been launched for a few days. So we don't actually know, are they, are they going to be winners? But we know something that's been running for a long time is, is actually profitable. Or else the person is just losing a bunch of money and just likes to donate money to Mark Zuckerberg for whatever reason. Um, but likely not. So anyways, this, the same sort of thing is happening here, but Look at this one, health practitioners. This is the fastest way to help your patients and clients with their stress and anxiety, right? So we're getting specific person, specific problem immediately in the first line. Specific person, specific problem, right? And he's kind of also hinting at the methodology, right? I have the fastest methodology, right? So again, is it faster? Is it easier? Is it more effective? Is it more pain-free? Is it more done for you? These are all things I mentioned before, how to make the method a little juicier. So you can start to study these and keep going down and um, you know, become a scientist here. So 
that's one way to make to become a scientist. And I encourage you, instead of skipping ads, watch every ad on every platform that you're on. Begin to notice the hooks. Begin to notice how they grab your attention. Don't skip ads anymore because you need to become an ads scientist. And how we're going to do that? Well, we want to see what's working out there. Um, and another thing as, as far as being a scientist, I was mentioning this earlier, but don't chase the wrong numbers. Don't look at likes and shares and views and followers. All those things are awesome. But again, we've spoken with hundreds of people who have 100K, 300K, 500K followers who are barely producing any revenue with their high, with their high ticket products versus, hold on, versus us. Um, for instance, when we first started running paid ads for Conscious Business Mastery, we had so many people commenting in our ads saying, there's no way you can teach people how to have a successful business because you only have 500 followers or 1,000 followers or 2,000 followers which again is pointing out the big misconception that followers equals success or followers equals revenue. And it really doesn't. So meanwhile, while we were getting those comments, we hit our first $100,000 month with nine posts and 400 followers and no website. We hit our first $100,000 month in Conscious Business Mastery with nine posts on Instagram, all of our leads coming from Instagram, 400 followers and no website. Okay, so we're getting those comments on our post and at the same time, I mean, how are you going to teach people about business? Because people are not becoming scientists and they're not looking at the right data. Okay, they, they don't actually see what's, what's creating conversions. Well, we can take a deep breath in, getting to our last points here. Exhale. So as far as becoming a psychologist, we need to be able to enter the frame of the person we're trying to help. What are the problems they're facing? I'll, I'll drop some of these questions in the chat so you can all um, contemplate them later. Okay, you can copy them into your own notes. Oops, everyone in the meeting. What are the problems they're facing? What are their secret thoughts about those problems? How would they articulate their pains and desires in their language? What are they tired of seeing the market in the marketplace as far as solutions to their problems? Right? These are all ways to become uh, more of a psychologist when it comes to advertising to your sort of person. What are the problems? Secret thoughts. If you can name someone's secret thoughts, you will capture them in your marketing. So what are like the secret thoughts that they're having around the particular transformation that you're offering or lacking that transformation that you're offering? Right? If we can name those in our ads, we capture somebody's heart immediately and we can take them into a next step. Um, so giving a particular example about secret thoughts, like for instance, when I was trying to grow my holistic offer, um, I, I had a, a ton of experience with Ayurveda and, you know, tens of thousands of hours of study under my belt when I was only making 3k a month. And I was seeing all these people who like seemingly like just took like a one week, uh, shaman certification in the forest. And then were like making tens of thousands of dollars a month. And I was like, what the heck? Like, how is it that people who I, and again, it's a judgment, right? So I'm being vulnerable and I'm just sharing it's a judgment. It's a secret thought, but there's power in these secret thoughts of, man, how is somebody who seemingly has far less experience and competence than me seemingly making way more money than me? So that's an example of a secret thought, right? I was getting annoyed at like, man, these people are just like leading retreats in Bali and like, doing this thing over here and there. And I'm like watching their content and I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's a judgment, right? That's my issue, not their issue, but it's a judgment. It was a judgment on my end of like, man, I don't feel like this person's super competent, right? But when you can name that secret thought and capture somebody, then boom, you have them. You can lead them to the next step. You can, you name something that's happening inside of them and then you have their heart, right? around that particular pain that they're facing. So hopefully that's an, a, a decent example. All right, and then artist, real quick, is about um, portraying the right, the, the outcome, the pain, the mission, or the brand through our imagery, scripting, and videos, and tone, okay? So how is your background in your ad actually portraying the vibe of your whole business or the vibe of the transformation? How's what you're wearing? How's the imagery on your website? How's the branding on your website? How's the feel? How's the tone of how you're speaking, portraying the energetics of 
where you want to take people. Okay. These are all, these are all different things that we want to talk about as an artist or to embody that artist vibe. Right. And last point here. So solve the right problem, learn the right skills. This is huge. A lot of people out there are looking for a hack. They're looking for a pill. They're looking for in life, in life, not just in business, but in business specifically, people are looking for, they're thinking, oh, paid ads are going to solve my problem. Complex funnels, automation, sales team, appointment setter team, expensive webinar setup, high level marketing system. Guess what all those things do? They amplify what you already have. So they will multiply any problems with your product. They will multiply the problems with your delivery. They will multiply the problems with your sales, multiply the problems with your team. Right. And if you don't have all these steps above figured out before you start to amplify, then you're just amplifying a vague, unclear, not high level, highly thought out offering. And none of these things will fix that. None of paid ads in and of themselves won't fix a bad offer or a bad positioning of your offer or a lack of the triple S formula. A funnel won't solve a traffic problem, meaning now you have a crazy cool funnel set up. Well, people aren't just going to magically get into that. We have to have a really good proposition that we can really, you know, highly level, uh, high level articulate in the ad that then drives them to that funnel, that then drives them to a call, that then drives them to a client. So we need all these pieces before and understand that none of these are going to be a magic bullet. And I think so many marketers out there are preying on this. They're preying on, you just need this one magical webinar formula that's going to immediately make all these strangers to buy and uh, you know all your problems will be solved, right? But it's, it's just not true. You need all these things. And of course, that's a less sexy value proposition on my end, right? I could just tell you all, it's going to be one, one super simple thing that you didn't think of and you're going to get a trillion clients. Well, I wish, but everybody would do it. Is it going to be challenging? Yeah, absolutely. Will it be challenging to master all these things? Absolutely. But on the other side, you will have learned the most valuable skill on the planet because you can take, and you can take that skill with you forever. If you understand how to position value, how to move people's hearts towards you and how to convert those into sales calls and into clients, you literally have created financial freedom for yourself just by having a particular skill set down in your mind. And that is the payoff of becoming an authentic marketer, a high level marketer. Okay. So um, how's everybody feeling? But put one word in the chat. And I'll take another deep breath in. Determined, inspired, optimistic, grateful, right? Awesome. Pumped, thankful. Awesome. So this kind of happened last time I led this and I have a little bit more content to get through. I'm going to try to get through it in the next few minutes to respect everybody's hard stop at the hour. Um, but in case I don't, I, I might need to stay another five minutes um, after, after the hour. So let's get through this really important section um, and then we'll end here. So the, the last thing I'll mention is, well, what are the actual ways we can do lead generation? Well, there's four main lead generation types. You can either reach out to people you know or people you don't know. Okay, those are the only two types of people on the planet. Uh, people you know and people you don't know. And then you can either do one-to-one -one outreach, which means you're just reaching out to one person at a time, or you can do one-to-many outreach, which means your message is reaching multiple people or a bunch of people at a time. Okay, so when it comes to one-to-one -on -one -one outreach with people you know, it's called warm outreach, right? This is friends, family, past clients, et cetera, et cetera. Followers on Instagram, followers on your social media. These are people who already have some idea of who you are and how you serve. When it comes to people that you don't know and you reach out to them one-on-one, -on -one, it's called cold outreach, okay? And literally just these two methods, warm outreach, cold outreach, just DMing people on Instagram. That's how I brought my Ayurveda business to 30, 40, $50,000 a month before running a single paid ad. 
Okay, so don't underestimate the power of these two, of just being able to lead with value, uh, lead with the energy of giving in a one-to-one -one fashion and reach the right people. It's never been easier to find the right people on Instagram. Literally just search by people's bios, by uh, go to other people's, um, you know, kind of competitors pages, look at who's commenting, engaging under those, look at people who are checking in at the places your ideal clients would go, like a yoga studio or Ayurveda clinic or whatever it is. You can search by locations on Instagram. There's so many freaking ways. It's wild. Now, one to many of people, you know, this is content, right? This is, you produce one piece of content and a thousand followers see it or 500 followers or 10,000 followers see it. Okay. And in that content, we need to get skilled at how to create a high level value proposition and how to ask people to take a next step. Okay. So you need to be able to get good at positioning the next step as the highly beneficial thing to do, right? Booking the call as the next step on their journey, right? In that call, I'm going to give you a free roadmap on how to go from X, Y, and Z to ABC, right? Just like I've done with a dozen other of my clients and you'll get a personalized roadmap on that call, right? So the call is the valuable thing. Okay. And I'm kind of breezing through this quickly at this point, just for sake of time. Um, and then lastly, there's paid ads, right? So when we're reaching out to people we don't know in a one-to-many fashion, that's paid ads, okay? We're paying money to put our message in front of people's eyeballs who have never seen us before, okay? So in, in order of difficulty, I say warm outreach is the easiest, right? People you know one-to-one, -one, that's the easiest. I would start there. And I would, um, yeah, when it, comes, when it comes time to get started, how do I get started? Which one do I do? Start with the lowest hanging fruit. Okay. Email, phone contacts, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, X, Facebook followers, friends, family, community, groups that you're a part of, past clients, current clients. These are all people that already know you to some extent. And guess what? They don't have to be a perfect client for you to reach out to them. But guess what they, they probably do have is they probably know somebody who would be a perfect client for you. So everybody is worth reaching out to. And when you make it, do you, who do you know who would benefit from a free consultation on how to go from ABC to XYZ and remove this pain from their life? You're leading with value. You're not asking them directly. And it's really low pressure, right? The worst they can say is, no, I don't, I don't know anybody. The best they can say is give you three, three or four dream clients for free and you can give them a little referral from it, right? So I'm going super quick for this just for the sake of time. Um, but again, if you've never run paid ads, by, by doing these methods first, right, these free methods, you're actually going to master the skill of converting people into calls before spending a single dollar on ads. Then again, when you spend money on ads, it's going to make that skill and that account way more. It's going to make each dollar count way more, which also helps you build authority on your account through how we're posting and it's going to help us attract more buyers. So if you think you're beyond this, you are wrong, right? If you think you are beyond cold outreach, warm outreach, all that sort of stuff, you're wrong. Because if you ever want to build a big business and have a team that can predictably generate leads, you'll want to know the basics of these skills so you know who to hire. If you've never done it, how do you know who to hire? If you never mastered it, how do you know who to hire? Um, know why they are or aren't getting results and know how to coach them to improve. Right? Because once you get to a certain point of revenue, you can have somebody reach out to all these people on your behalf. Right? But if you never did it yourself and never took the time to master it, you won't know how to hire. You won't know why they're getting results or not. And you won't know how to help them improve. So it's such a valuable resource to know. Okay? Um, that's, I think that's all I got. That's all I got for now. I'm going to give away one, one little resource in a second. Um, but my question is, what are you waiting for, right? My challenge to you is do 50 warm re reach outs per day. Do 50 cold outreach per day. Do one post per day. Follow up with everyone you messaged yesterday and message every single new follower and use a non-needy networking system that we've spoken about. Produce something actually valuable. Whether that's a training, whether that's a guide, whether that's a free little mini course, whether that's just a free consultation on the call, produce something actually valuable so you can lead with that. Lead with the energy of giving and trust that the people who are meant for you are going to take the next step and the people who aren't meant for you are not going to take the next step. 
Okay. We don't need to get leads in, in, an, in a sleazy way or an invasive way. We can just leave with value. People who want to take the next step will. Okay. The more people who know about your work, the more magic unfolds. So what are you waiting for? Right. So uh, anybody who wants to learn a little bit more about this and wants to have one-on-one -on -one support, have the best community for holistic entrepreneurs, wants to have conscious systems education, wants us to actually build out your funnels and automations after we've figured out that triple S formula, after we've made your offer really, really good, um, wants seasonal retreats to unwind network and learn, then please, please apply. Please talk to us. We'd love to have you as part of the community and uh, have, you, have you work with us if you're interested. So the call is free. I'll drop the link. And also we have Michaela here and Rossi here. You guys can raise your hands, wave, wave to the crowd. They're part of our team and um, they can help you get set in at a time that works if you're not able to find a perfect time for you here. So <clears throat> for those of you who want to stay a, another minute, I'm going to drop uh, an additional resource for you all. But I want to give anybody who's just feeling that call, click the, click the link in the chat. Go ahead and apply for a call. The worst case scenario is you get clarity on your next steps. You get more clarity about um, our specific process of scaling your business. Best case scenario, we get you incredible results and we work together long term and you know skip through skip through uh fields of flowers holding hands and singing songs and stuff like that you know um so i got one more resource thanks for staying with me for a sec i'm gonna find a way to get this video for you but i'll describe this method in 30 seconds this is one of the most powerful methods for people who um, have yet to spend money on ads it's called the scholarship method Essentially, what we do is we allow people to get a partial or full scholarship for our high ticket program, and we get tons of people to apply for that scholarship scholarship application. Out of those people who apply, some of those people will be willing to just pay in full. They just would have like preferred to have it free, but they are financially resourced. Other people, they'll be truly in need, and we can give that program to them for free in exchange for a referral, a testimonial and uh, a, a feedback on how to make the program a little bit better, right? We'll gain so much from that and we'll create so much goodwill in the community. We've given so many people scholarships with our Ayurveda bodywork offers, with our healing offers, et cetera. And one of the programs that we launched was a $4,500 Ayurveda program. We had 85 people apply for a scholarship. And so many of those people who uh, applied for the scholarship just straight up bought the program because they were financially resourced. They love what we were doing and they just bought. And they also helped us open up more scholarship spots for people who were truly in need. Okay, like single moms, people in South America where the currency conversion is just too wild to pay $4,500. So many people in, in really tight situations. So I'm gonna drop the Google Doc associated with this, which basically outlines exactly how to do this. Um, this isn't a scholarship for our program, just to be clear. This is a method for you to get your next two, three, five, ten 10 high ticket paid clients while also giving one or two people a scholarship into your program and just depositing tons of goodwill in the community. So I dropped the Google Doc. I'll find out a way to get this loom to all of you. I have all the emails from the people who have stayed on Zoom this long. And uh, that's what I got for y'all. Hey, um, I can drive the link to that loom if you want me to drop it in the chat. Yeah, drop it in the chat. So uh, Rossi has got the loom for this and that's the Google doc associated with. So make sure to open up all these links because uh, once I end the zoom, they're going to disappear. Okay. Awesome. I hope that you all enjoyed this. If anybody has a uh, one, you know, one or two takeaways you want to put in the chat, something you appreciated or, or something you want me to cover next time. I feel, I feel grateful to do these. You know, I feel like I've received so much in life and I've been able to, to come in contact with such amazing mentors and I've been given so much um, that I, this is really just for you all, right? This is really just for you all. So if anybody has one takeaway, just share in the chat one thing you got from this and otherwise you can log off and I'll see you in the next one. So thank you, Carol. Thank you, Seva, Dominique, Jacqueline, Greg. Great to see you. Gabriel.